to go to jump school. And then basically your third battalion at the time. So my wife, she was active duty. She was NAS Jacksonville. And I lived basically as kind of like bachelor officer quarters, um, essentially in Benning and uh, started my, yeah, the, the, the uh, yeah, couple year tour. And it, it was quite a cultural shock, right? So, <laughs> yeah, I've, and if you remember the, the, the Rangers back then, very different from the post 9-11. I mean, oh, it was yeah. the old school, um, you know, high and tight haircuts, spit shine boots. And and the the, the, Ra- the Rangers, I remember the, the first day there, um, I got introduced all uh yeah, to all the ranger officers and you know i was getting a, a lot of stink eye a little <laughs> bit but you know they're, they're a good in fact we had a social function at the officers club too but one of the first ncos i remember meeting was uh, sergeant matt eversman yeah he was the s3 nc uh air nco mm-hmm. real nice and humble and welcoming and now the rangers they were good guys in fact uh i ended up make, becoming really good friends with a lot of them yeah. And, and I think that's, that's one thing I've learned, as you guys know, everything's about relationships, right? Sure. It, it, it is. And especially as an ALO, I mean, it's that liaison, right? So that, you have to establish a bond and, you know, that, that tight relationship. And, and a lot of it happens, you know, socially, right? Or right. if you're, you're working out with them, you're partying or, you know, having a beer with someone later on. So. Well, that's, that's so one that, thing about you important. is that like uh, and with the Rangers and Matt can attest to this, if you're in shape, you're in, you know, like mm-hmm. and that was one thing about you. You're always in really good shape. You would like to work out. And I think they took to that and they saw you, you know, because we've had we've had a few ALOs that didn't quite, you know, get, get up to that standard, and, you know, and they kind of looked down on them a little bit. But I think that was that initial, you know, yep. like, a thing they saw you was pretty good. But yeah. Thanks. Well, I will say, yeah, I've seen a lot of out of shape ALOs. Seen a few tech P. Oh yeah, 17. no, no, no and, doubt. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and, and and I have to admit though, my first impression when I when I first got there, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I was a little disappointed. Uh, oh. Of course, this this is the day before you know uh, the screening, and uh, so seventeenth we had the detachment at, at Hunter. Mm-hmm. I got to know some of those guys, you know, super squared away from you remember Dennis Hay, sure, su- super stud. I mean, I love his, his story and uh, Lundquist. Right, right. Uh, I remember those guys, but we were kind of in the infancy, right? And it it seemed like just my perception, tact P, a lot of it was timing. If you happen to be in a unit, uh, yeah, that was assigned to support, you know, like a you know, soft unit, you know, you, you were there, you, you got the job. And so, in fact, it, what I remember, J.D., you were the first attack P that we actually recruited or you sent off station. Right, right. Remember, and then we had Quisenberry came from Hawaii. I mean, but I'm yeah. saying, but by the time we, I left just within that short two-year period, I mean, we were, you know, full up. And I remember Jazz Erickson, when he showed up, that really started it. I mean, sure, for sure. Yeah, it, it, and Jazz was a stud, you know, he had uh, combat oh, yeah. experience with, um, third bat mm-hmm. i forget which ranger battalion he, yeah, was, he was with but he I jumped mean, into, into panama with third bat yeah with, with with third bat, yeah so uh obviously he had a lot of credibility and then we had guys who really were motivated really wanted to be there mm-hmm. right yeah. and so and, and jess was phenomenal you know, we made a really good team oh, yeah. and, and what i loved about that job i would say is that we, we kind of roles but we were tight knit you know we'd work out together we were in the field together we kind of had our niche, right? You know, my job was, you know, a lot uh, the integration with the staff and the leadership to jazz. I mean, you, that, that's the thing in tech, P, you guys are like fire and fire and forget, you know, <laughs> right. AMRAM or a Phoenix missile, you know, it was so <laughs> professional squared away. Um, it made things easy for me. But what I loved is that cohesiveness that, that we had, right? Yeah. Remember we spent a month in Panama and all the little, you know, oh, TDY right. yeah, trips. Yeah. And, and what I loved about that, especially the men, you know, the 17th, Everyone was so professional. Like we could go out socially, but and still have fun. But it, where, like when I was in the Navy, it, it wasn't done. Right, right, right. And even my the rest of my time in the Air Force, things were more separate. Right, with you know the upside maintenance. And so, in fact, you guys were the ones, you know, the tech people who you know trained me up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, really, you guys were the subject matter experts. Uh, in fact, back in the day, I remember uh, the JTAC call didn't exist. You guys were ETACs. Right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I remember, but I got my you know terminal attack control and. Um, in fact, if I recall, JD, we were in Camp Landing, and uh, we were—I forget one of the regular Ranger exercises—but we were able to work in a ton of casts, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we had—it was almost like an air show. In fact, at the uh, farewell, the battalion commander teased me about setting up my own private air show, and I, you guys called me a cast hog, tied oh, yeah. me up, <laughs> taped me up. Oh, that's right—we taped you to that pillar get, in the in the barracks. That's get, right. Gave me a little hazing. 
<laughs> I don't know why I worked out. I was on the radio too much. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah, but we had a lot of fun. Uh, I remember that. But it was, a, but again, those were peacetime days, and you know, the and it was interesting to hear the stories of the guys who, uh, you know, it's their bat who had uh, what this B company in Somalia, and mm. there are a few guys who had jumped into uh, you know Panama. And I think even fewer uh, who had jumped into Granada. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so and it was just a standard jort cycle, right? Right. Remember we had the pagers and. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. And remember, all of our gear was a uh, standard CIF. Right, right. Issued. I think we, we had the M4s. Uh, I forget what kind of nods. but and, and the one thing, the Rangers back then, I mean, super squared away, but they reminded me of just skinny squared away Marines, you know? <laughs> but, you know, but again, the strength, I think, were, were the NCOs, right? And, yeah. of course, all the officers were all hardcore type A plus personalities. Um, in fact, we had a, a joke that uh, – so in the staff, there's kind of like a hierarchy. You had all the infantry officers, right? The yeah. Infantry MOSs that we call them. They were the carnivores, and then we had the herbivores. It was like uh, myself, the uh, you know the, the surgeon, the FSO, the comms, the, sick, you know, <laughs> the chemo. We we were the yeah the, <laughs> the plant eaters. Right. right. Yeah, that, that was kind of the joke, but uh, but you know it was a fun. It was it was a great tour. Um, you know, I just you know super rewarding it was great to see just you know the i would say even the evolution you know 17th at least uh, supporting you know third uh, battalion yeah oh, I, was, I was gonna add you know one thing I, I think is kind of interesting too is you know your dynamic back then the fact that mm-hmm. the 17th was a mixed unit for life yeah oh right that's um, right you know and i mean I, i'm assuming it was valentini was probably your commander around oh that. yeah yeah <laughs> I, i'm just I, I mean i'm curious i mean i knew you guys yep. i knew all you guys back then i was up at bragg uh, coming mm-hmm. down there but i mean like what was the what was the relationship like being that that little section of a conventional unit that's you know kind of doing their own thing yeah so we had i think remember the 17th was out of harmony church harmony church or, yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Har- harmony church um for the most part, so we all worked out of the HHC battalion. So we were, you know, fully integrated. I mean, occasionally we would go to, uh, the, I guess, the you know, 17th, the headquarters, but we didn't do a lot there. They were, uh, you know, of course, they had a flight that was supporting uh, with Third Brigade on mm-hmm. Kelly Hill. Um, we kind of kept to ourselves. Uh, we, we had a smaller debt with, um, you know, the regimental guys. Remember we had a, one gunship guy, Nick Sully. Right, right. Remember him? Yeah. I, I remember Klukas. I met him. Klukas was a stud. He was, oh, yeah. you know, he was only there for a few months. And then he left, and I ran at him later. He was like a command chief uh, in Europe. Right. But he he was considered like the apex, the the epitome of oh, you know, sure. attack feet. <laughs> yeah. The Rangers. Uh, he, we'll talk about him. Yeah, I think he outrangered the Rangers. Sure. Uh, but I remember uh, Paul Ford, uh, Andy Cornelius. Yep. yep. Uh, studs, and I think they we had just started kind of informally supporting R D. Uh, but I don't know if it. Had... I think they supported them at first. I think Paul and Andy had supported them, and then for some reason yeah. they didn't for a little bit, and then uh, I think we got back into it. But yeah, but yeah, yeah. And then Bruce Voigt came in. Was he? He was after Marty, right. wasn't he? I thought. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Br- yeah. Bruce was squared away, so pretty much um, we dealt with just our little, you know, detachment. Th- uh, I'm trying to even think what we were called. I think we were B flight, but then, you know, we just there about, you know, we had PT. We just were together almost all the time. We'd do some things with the, the regimental folks. Um, <laughs> now, JD, were you still at the 17th? Cause you never. Or yeah. I stayed there leave? for when you left and then I okay. stayed there the whole time when you came back. Yeah. I was there from 97 okay. to about, uh, 20, 20, when did I go to 2009? I guess I went to, um, alaska after that so yeah that's right that's a yeah. long stretch yeah well i mean they kept like they just kept asking me to do different stuff like it was like you know i was at battalion first and then they asked me to go to rd and then they asked me to uh you know be the op soup so it, it was just and like like we always say right place right time i just happened to fall into those certain circumstances that they just kept recoding me and i ended up being able to stay which was great it was the best thing that could ever happen and uh yeah I, yeah it was it was great i had a good time but yeah when you came back that was a. Uh, it was crazy because that that I that's unheard of. I'd never heard of a in ALO doing that. You know, like being being a captain, and they come back as a lieutenant colonel. So yeah, that was a so two thousand seven, uh, and, and the reason that happened. Uh, so after uh, so it was at Lake and Heath. I was able to get a staff job. Actually, for a while, I had orders to go back to the seventeenth. Nice. Um, 
and it was to be the DO, but then whoever the commander was said, well, I got somebody else to be a DO. And then my detailer said, we're not going to send you back. You've already done that. Um, yeah. So then I was kind of looking for a staff job. I got the one position that was actually LA Air Force Base. So <laughs> <laughs> Space Command, I, it was a rated position. I will say probably the best three years just from a personal point of view as far as you know, a lot of surfing, season passes, Disneyland, you <laughs> right. know, snowboarding. Yeah. But you want to talk about being, you know, the tip of the spear. We were like at the base of the handle. <laughs> so, right. you know, I was dealing with acquisition and engineers and, you know, I had a, a team. It was, yeah, I mean, I did a lot of PowerPoint briefings, but I will say, but I did have a, one uh, cool deployment. I went to Afghanistan and uh, I was actually out of Kabul, CFC Alpha, kind of the overall coalition, you know, headquarters. And I was a narcot uh, the counter narcotics planner. Nice. And again, just... Uh, cool position. So, but I was working not only with, uh, you know, NATO, ISAF, but the Afghan Ministry of Interior, the State Department, UN, uh, DEA, INL. And back then we lived in drug lord houses in Kabul. We'd have these <laughs> Afghanis would take us in a taxi to, you know, where we worked. I had a truck. I remember one time driving through Chicken Street. We had a lot of free reign <laughs> back then. And uh, just, I remember traveled everywhere. And so you'd, um, I mean, it, it was, but it was fascinating being in that not only joint, but international coalition environment. In fact, my boss, he was a, a, a British colonel, right? And oh, so okay. we also had a French uh, major. He, he was our party planner. So he would take, show us, take us to all the cool parties in, in ISAF or, you know, some of the state department. <laughs> you know, I'm really fun. noticing a trend yeah, in all of your assignments. <laughs> There's a lot of partying going on. <laughs> it's important. You got to blow off steam. Yeah. Yeah, it was. <laughs> and I, I ended up running uh, the MI-17s that you guys had. Uh -huh. That actually ended up really? becoming the programs I ran in Afghanistan after I retired. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, all the MI-17s and PC-12s. Yep. Wow. I'd like to think we made Afghanistan better, but... <laughs> it was good for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, but that was a, yeah, kind of a pretty fun, rewarding tour. So anyway, so I'm, uh, I had to back at Seymour Johnson. And uh, anyway, so I'd heard uh, Nick Solly. So we'd kind of kept in touch. And I, he invited me down to visit. He was uh, down at Fort Bragg. I think he was a DO, um, the 18th, I yep. believe. Or, oh, was it? Okay. Yeah, the, mm -hmm. yeah, the 18th. Yeah. And so I had met, and with, so it was a, actually, it was a change of command. And so, but I had met the, the DO before me, uh, JD, I forget his name. He had been a prior enlisted ranger. I think he was a, a helicopter pilot. Oh, Moncrief. Moncrief, yeah, yeah Moncrief, Moncrief, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, but but Moncrief was uh, apparently leaving. I'm like, uh, and I, wow, that would be really cool to go back. So I just kind of threw my hat in the ring. Um, I interviewed with the ASOG commander, and I remember at the interview he said, so just confirm you're a, a volunteer for any DO position. And I said, no, I'm a volunteer for the 17th. Because <laughs> right. I, I had a pretty good thing going at Seymour Johnson. Uh, you know, we are very comfortable, and I was – uh, actually, I had a side gig. I was an advanced agent with Air Force One, so that was kind of cool. I got to do a few of those trips. and nice. So I'm like, I could just wait it out. I would go to the 17th, but I'm not going anywhere else. Sure. So, And anyway, so I was able to get orders. And uh, yeah, and it was great to see you, JD, right away. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and that's where, and so Matt was there. So I was at the DO and Matt was the Ops NCO. And we basically got there at the same time. And it, it was... It, yeah, and to go to see the 17th, and you guys have been pushing hard for, what, five, six years, right? Oh, yeah. Constant deployments. And back then we had the SF uh, detachments and, I mean, constant state of churn. So it was – but again, you know, I mean, just – super professional and you know amazing the stories and i hate to say we almost took for granted what guys were doing yeah. um remember like muley you guys i remember hearing about like his big uh incident you know like a 24-hour firefight yeah yeah big stack of aircraft and then you know like mad jd hearing about your stories and it was just kind of hard to believe but it was just it, it was standard standard right 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was it's crazy to think that it had become mm -hmm. routine, but essentially it had. You're right. It, 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 yeah. yeah. And it, it was just amazing. But it was at that point, yeah, the 17th uh, was all, you know, kind of soft side. We're still technically under ACC. And I think it was later that year when we added uh, the guys out of Fort Lewis, right? The, you know, 275. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we had the guys at Bragg and then, uh, yeah, the guys at Lewis, or basically all the guys that fell under the 18th came underneath. And then, yeah, the Lewis mm -hmm. guys were the last ones to move over. Yep. Hey, JD, one thing I want to ask. So, what was the transformation? So, the 17th, when you first got there uh, back, 
you must have shown up like 98, right? I believe it was like uh, October 97, I think, when I got or there. 97. Okay, yeah. 97, then through until through 2007. Uh, like, yeah, it was like, what was, well, it was exponential because, like, like you were talking about, it was, you we started off with just the CIF kit and the Rangers. Didn't really have they. They had all the stand like L, we were still wearing LBEs and like you know mm-hmm. ammo you know ammo pouches and two one quart canteens and a two quart canteen on your ruck, and then it just it it grew because of, out of the necessity you know we just tried to deploy with that kind of equipment you know the knots we had weren't were substandard I think we had PVS fives when we first got there, and then they I know it was crazy, <laughs> and then we got I think we got the fourteen eventually and then uh, you know we we ended up. I think we got the PVS 15, the dual tube before the Rangers mm-hmm. did. I, I don't think we okay. all, I don't think anybody yeah. had those. Um, but yeah, it was just, it was amazing that the, the, the change yeah. in like body armor and, you know, just equipment. Mm-hmm. And we kind of had to fight. I want to say, Matt, correct me if I'm wrong. You came in, you were there, you were involved with this, but I, I think we had to fight to get the, the body armor that the Rangers were using. I think in that regard, they, they led the way on that. You know, they were. Yeah, we, uh, that was, uh, you know, probably. That was, if you want to say the straw that broke the camel's back for hmm. us really wanting to leave ACC, yeah. um, that was, that was it because we were sending guys, you know, you were supposed to be x-raying your body armor so often mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. and, uh, the body armor that we were sending guys down, we didn't even have enough of it. I don't know if you remember, yeah. I was literally right, right. borrowing plates yep. from the 15th ASOS from the commission wow. <laughs> because ACC would not buy us body armor. Their yeah. whole thing is like, we'll get it from the Rangers. And it's like, well, that's not the right answer. Right. You know? especially at the rate we were deploying. So, mm-hmm. so I remember going to, I, I forgot who was running the 15th, whether it was Stockman or Corbett. And I'm like, Hey man, can I sign out plates and some body armor? And, and I remember, the, I remember they were just looking at me like I was crazy. <laughs> yeah. You know? I, I remember that. And in fact, man, you just kind of brought up a good point too. And I kind of remember even from my days, you know, late nineties at the 17th and then in 2007, still under ACC, but it seemed like the rest of the, I'd say conventional tech beat community didn't like the 17. That was kind of the perception. Maybe not too strong of a word. I think but... maybe the leadership, they had a feeling, and I don't know, this, this is the, the feeling I got. It was like we were, they didn't like us because they thought we didn't like them or something. You know, mm-hmm. It was more like, because I don't think we had any ill will, especially towards the yeah. 15. We were like, we were definitely in, in grain with those guys. I mean, that we trained mm-hmm. with, we trained their dudes yeah. and we did stuff. But Matt, maybe you talked to them. If you guys, we, we just had some, you know, I don't want to say poor leadership, but some uh, uneducated leadership at ACC and at the Pentagon mm-hmm. yeah. uh, at the time, senior enlisted leadership. I'm not even, mm-hmm. I won't even blame it on the officers. Uh, it was a senior enlisted leadership that just, you know, still were in that, you know, we're, we're evolving so fast during GWAT and they're still in this mindset of, you know, the fold of gap and, yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you've got your relationship with the army. You should be getting all that stuff from the army. <laughs> Yeah, but man, we're not. It's, this isn't like a I get body armor issued once and it's good for ten years. Yep. Yeah, these guys yeah. are every you know every six months. These dudes are going down range and you know mm-hmm. and, and using this shit. Not to mention the training the guys are going through. So yeah. it, it was very it, you know maybe that was bad on you know my part and so, some of our part that we didn't educate those guys. There was always I forget. There was always a senior uh, you know E nine who the functional chief right. It, ACC was always kind of like the naysayer. It was always hard to work uh, personnel assignments. I remember uh, it, it was, was not a big fan. Yeah. 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 yeah, well, yeah, it was frustrating because they they didn't. It was almost like they didn't believe us. Like we, they thought mm-hmm. we were trying to get over, which is kind of like. <clears throat> I mean, again, I love I love this career field, but that's kind of the way old school kind of guys thought. Like they never yeah. believed anything you said. They always because I mean, frankly, they were. It was justified because most people were trying to get over. They were trying to get extra stuff and trying to, you know, skate or whatever. But, you know, we weren't. We were actually like, no, we need these nods. We need this body armor. We need this. We need this uh, PEQ on our weapon. We No, mm-hmm. I couldn't. You know, it's amazing. You go out to the range with Rangers and they were like, oh, just shoot your laser down here. And it's like, what laser? What do you mean? And, you know, so <laughs> it, it's it, that's the kind of stuff that we were trying to convey. And since nobody else really had that kind of stuff and nobody had been exposed to it, they didn't. I guess, believe us or that we really needed it. Yeah. yeah, And and that was really where the, yeah, that was where, that was where the push to move to AFSOC really started Mm kind of, we had talked about it and I'd had meetings with, uh, with jazz prior to when I was down at 720th here at Hurlburt, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'd talked to jazz a few times, uh, general, or, uh, not Longoria, uh, LaMonica, chief Mm LaMonica was down here. And I think it was Colonel Thompson was the group commander at the time, Yep, you know, and we just had some discussions and even, even their predecessors, uh, on, hey, what do you think about the soft tech P guys, the Rangers, mm-hmm. and tech P guys moving to AFSOC? And I said, 
I think I think it'd be great. Yeah. You know, so you start having these conversations, and I'm like, so when I got to the 17th yeah. and really mm-hmm. saw kind of the, the problems, and what I was really amazed with was how much resistance I, I met with <laughs> from guys yeah. at the 17th that did not want to go under. Uh, okay, and and mm-hmm. I had been there. I saw you know how much when I deployed in 2005. I saw how much AFSOC spent on me, yeah. one individual, mm-hmm. yep. probably forty thousand dollars worth of equipment yeah. for one deployment, and I was like we're crazy not to want to be a part of this. You know? Exactly. So, yeah. So that was, what, that was kind of the, the genesis of it. Of that, that final, I think the wheels were emotion, <laughs> but man, that just fighting for body armor for dudes to go down range was just absolutely foreign to me. Yeah. Yep. I remember that. Yeah. So in 2007, cause I know Matt, you had really paved the way and I'd forgotten you were actually with the two one up at Pope, right? With, in like the first, yeah. yeah, the first TAC P would actually be, I don't know if you you weren't officially assigned, but you, no, 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 they did a, uh, so they did, it was a uh, Colonel Longoria was the commander of the two one at the okay. time. Uh, mm-hmm. He was an 05. And then, um, and actually it's kind of funny cause and Jeff Staha was the blue team leader. And I know mm-hmm. you've had him on here. Yeah. Yeah. Before. So they did a uh, they did a trial program essentially, and it was kind of almost mirrored the SF thing. They they wanted to bring TACPs over from the 14th ASOS to essentially be help train their guys and be the fires guy on the special tactics teams. The two one had just become an STS, I think, the year prior, um, special tactics squadron. So they they volunteered. It was my you know myself, Todd McCabe, JJ Salisbury, and uh, Gary Jones was actually kind of our our E6 NCOIC. If you will, mm-hmm. he ran a fire shop yep. in the uh, at the squadron. Uh, the rest of us were on teams, and uh, it was supposed to be a year long program. It was all volunteer, and uh, I think Mignon was Sean Mignon was supposed to go over there, and then he ended up going to Kosovo, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, mm-hmm. but uh, so anyway, so we ended up with our guys, and, and and honestly, I'll tell you that was probably we talk about timing and things that happened. That was probably so instrumental in my career because having a chance to work with those guys on a daily basis and kind of show them, Hey, we all have misconceptions of what yep. each other do. You know, mm-hmm. we all think that combat controllers are a bunch of <laughs> staying in holiday inns wearing their yeah. little hats, you know, <laughs> prima, prima donnas. And they all think that these are a bunch of assholes that hate them. And I was like, so, so you, getting a chance to work together and go on trips with those guys and, and train with them. Um, it, it, it opened everybody's eyes, which was awesome. Yeah. Which led yep. me, you know, later on in my career when I, I left, I ended up leaving Bragg and I ended up going to Hawaii. I ended up coming back to the 720th. I knew those same guys. Mm-hmm. You know, Jeff Staha's replacement was Mike Martin. Mike Martin, who's now this, you know, the SOCOM J3. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I could just go down a list of names of guys that were captains and staff sergeants that became command chiefs. Mm-hmm. 06s, 07s, you know, Wolf Davis, uh, you know, R.A. Armfeld. I mean, these are all dudes that kind of pass through those doors. So anyway, right. yeah. I wanted to tell you that, yeah, yes, I was over there, you know, I don't know if I was necessarily the first. Yeah. The, two, the two four still had some fires guys up there, like Marty and uh, mm-hmm. and I'm trying to think of who was it Andy Cornelius. I think he was there. Didn't he do a he, fire? He was there. He was there later. Yeah, he was there okay. later. There was one guy that really kicked the whole thing off for us up at the two four, and then Jonesy at the two one. But yeah, mm-hmm. that was that was the the I guess the birth of it all, if you will. Yeah, yeah. it was right. And if I remember that, uh, so I think it was a. 2007, but anyways, when the AGA was created, right? The uh, Air Ground Operations Wing, they basically had all the TACP units consolidated and the, the, some special security forces team, but uh, but it was General Longoria who yeah, yeah. you know, in combat controller. So he was the first commander. And yes. I remember he said, I love all berets. And he was a great, I think, unifying force. Oh, 100%. Because I, I remember sure. my first ALO tour, I know there was a little angst or I don't know, slight animosity with the you know controllers, TACP. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, but I remember Matt, but when you showed up, because uh, again, yeah, you laid the groundwork for the integration into AFSOC. And I remember working a lot with uh, Major Chris Larkin, uh, mm-hmm. you know, a great guy down there and doing our trips. And uh, it, it was the right place as we know, because even in 2007, I remember even the equipment we had, you know, in some ways we looked like gypsies, you know, it was oh, not yeah. <laughs> very standardized. I remember, you know, my kit it wasn't. And then, yeah, by but, yeah, then within a year, we're under SOCOM and I think MFP4, right? Then we're no kidding, getting in the standardized, you know, kit. And, yeah, yeah. But Matt, you were the one, but like I said, I was telling JD earlier, you know, you the right man, the right time, the right place, you know, to, to make all that happen. It was with all of your personal, re, your relationships made really no kidding for a, such a smooth transition. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, all, all the credit to you. 
Well, there's no credit. Making that happen. <laughs> it was it was timing and luck. You know? <clears throat> I, I know JD probably knows my story. I, when I was at the 720th, I got orders to Korea, and uh, and I was a little I was a little upset, and uh, I'd already decided at that point. Well, screw it, because um, I was going to try and go to the 24 to be a fire guy up there. Uh-huh. That was kind of kind of my plan. I was like, all right, screw it. I'll go to the I'll go to Korea. I'll you know put my package in from there, and I'll come back. And and then a uh, Quisenberry actually called me. I think it was like 2000, 2000. Yeah, it was 2005 because Q called me up. I was deployed and mm-hmm. uh, and he offered me a job at the 17th. I was like, well, I don't know, man. I'm not, I'm, I got my plan. This is what I'm going to do. And he's like, <laughs> yep. well, you know, and I was like, and plus Monica, you know, I got Monica with me. I'm like, yep. I, I got to bring her. So Q goes, well, well, he goes, I'm like, what would I do there? He goes, well, <laughs> I want to put you in RRC. And I was like, I don't even know what the hell, I don't really know what RRC is. <laughs> right, you know? yeah. So he gives me a little bit of a, an explanation of it. I was like, oh, okay, well, you know what? That sounds kind of cool. But once again, Monica's the the lynch. Where mm-hmm. is she going to go? You know, and if, for people on the podcast who don't know, my wife was active duty military. Um, she had gone to jump school when she was at uh, Pope Air Force Base with us, the 14th mm-hmm. Day Assaults. And, um, and she was sitting down here at, Af- at AFSOC with me working the intelligence <coughs> water, which she mm-hmm. hated. And Q's like, well, let me talk to, uh, oh man, what was his name that was over at Jump School Forever? Uh, Entrobius. Oh, so yeah, let me talk right. to Marcus. And yeah, and then we got or we got Monica orders to Fort Benning as a mm-hmm. black hat. And then wow. I got, and then I got orders, you know, Q was able to get my orders to Korea canceled, pulled me up to the 17th. And the whole time I'm overseas. And I remember I went <laughs> from going to RRC and being really excited to, oh, hey, dude, sorry, man, um, you got promoted. Yeah. So now you're going to go, you're going to end up being the, uh, the B flight NCIC with 375. And I was like, eh, okay, well not, you know, not, as, not as attractive, but okay, I'll do it. That's cool. Hmm. And then Q gets orders and, and they go, <laughs> Oh, by the way, and the next phone call is you're going to be the ops suit. But I was like, Son of a, I was like, There's that's not what you guys offered me. Yeah. I would have never volunteered for this man. <laughs> be the ops suit. I, was like, I, still got, I got some fight left in me, man. I don't want to yeah. be you know, in that position. So anyway, yeah. Yeah, you know what though, in, in, a testament to you though like you knew you were you had an sf background essentially and i think mm-hmm. we talked about this on the first one but i want to reiterate it yeah. because i think it's really important you coming into the rangers you didn't just like come in and you know act like you own the place and right. thought you knew everything you went on a deployment i think it was with the first bat didn't you go on a like a 90 day or 120 day deployment where I you did, did. Yeah. Yep. it was yeah, over 100 well, missions i mean you did yeah. you were, oh, you were yeah, job was short they were short guys and, and <coughs> mm-hmm. asked, you know, hit me up and asked me if I'd be interested in going deploying with OLA and yep. first battalion. I was like, yeah, man, sounds fun. So it was great. <laughs> yeah. I got to deploy with those guys in 2008 and with a platoon and we were, yeah, we were up in Mosul and pretty busy. Bobby Pena was actually in our sister platoon over there. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah. So me and him were running and gunning the whole time. It was, it was a lot of fun. It, yeah, it's, that's it's probably the most <laughs> fun I've had on a deployment, mm-hmm. you know, we're, and you know, deployments like, you know, an SF deployment is you're going out, you're engaging, you're coming back, you're drinking beer and hanging out and having a good time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Rangers, it was like, you're, it's just fight, 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 you know, yeah. the entire time, which, which I loved. And, mm-hmm. and I, I love both missions, but that was probably the most fun I ever had on deployment. Just being around, you know, mm-hmm. I was 30, let's see, 2000, I was 36. And I'm probably, I think I was the oldest guy on the platoon <laughs> and I was mm-hmm. an E8. So I was like, you know, the next to the first or the highest ranking guy in the put <laughs> right <laughs> next yeah. to the PL. So yeah, so it was, it was pretty fun. It was it was like I said, being around all those young dudes and how mm-hmm. motivated they were and how good you know just how good the Rangers were and are. Was, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that was that was a blast. It was pretty unheard of. I mean, like like you said, it wasn't like you just went over there to yeah. do an advisor role or sat in the mm-hmm. talk. I mean, you were like a you know company JTAC it, as, as an E eight as you know. I mean, it was that was that was. Very commendable that you did that. It was so. I thought that was so awesome. It, it was great. I was very fortunate for the opportunity and very thankful. So yeah, and you some great people that, that I still talk, talk to people about. So. You, I remember uh, you really bonded with them, and they wanted you to come back to Ranger Prom. Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah. Yeah. That. yeah, that was funny. But uh, yeah, but the Rangers had, had evolved. And just one quick, uh, you know, just an observation. So. Uh, I replaced Belk. So at the senior yep. level, you know, 17th, we would do a fires desk and, uh, think Bell, he had, uh, he was at TF 17. And so I replaced him as a J three fires. But I remember at the time we had, uh, it was at a, you know, buy up, uh, we had the two seven five folks were kind of operating there. And I remember after one mission, um, it's hard to remember which one of our J our J tax, but I saw him after a mission is early morning and just the swagger, you know, the, the kit <laughs> and you, 
you know, of course, you know, the Rangers, they had, you know, now they were growing their hair out a little bit, but they look like operators. And, and it was a complete 180 from back in the late 90s. Yeah. And again, they look like skinny squared away Marines <laughs> now. And, you know, and then Rangers were doing their own missions. And I mean, what I'm saying is and this was 2007, but wow, they've really evolved and they, they just keep evolving. You know, now when I see commercials, recruiting commercials for the Rangers or their tack piece, like, <laughs> yeah, you know, pr- pretty, pretty impressive. So, but just visually, visually for me, it was, a, it was quite a transformation. Right. Right. Yeah. They, it was kind of like out of necessity, you know, I mean, they had to step up. There were so many missions yep. because like, you think about it, you know, we talk about Panama and Grenada and we talk about mm-hmm. uh, Somalia, you know, those are, in, those are isolated incidences, essentially, you know, maybe a couple of days here, a couple of days there, even desert storm, hundred hours. But this mm-hmm. was like 10, 15, 20 years of the kind of missions Matt was going on, like a hundred mission, hundred plus missions per deployment. Yep. So like the, the lessons being learned were just, you know, exponentially more than anything else we'd ever experienced. So yeah, they, mm-hmm. they just became these yep. supermen as, you know, as the, as the GWAT went on. Yeah. It was yeah. Awesome. And, and I would say that was the, that was mm-hmm. the, ta- the task force as a whole. I'll, mm-hmm. yeah, for know, sure. I, I remember just, I, I think, I, I don't know if I talked about this last time or not, but I'll never forget when, you know, you're, you're there and you, you get notified of a mission, you walk into the, you walk into the jock, yep. you get your products, you go mm-hmm. over, you, you know, you brief. And as you're stepping to the strikers, you know, at that time, mm-hmm. you know, all your assets are moving. Like right. yeah, they're all coming to support this mission. So they're, as I'm walking, I'm checking in with the 58 D's and, you know, a U 28 yep. gun, gunship mm-hmm. or, or whatever supporting me there, you know, one of the contractor aircraft Greyhound or dare. And, it, and it's just, I mean, it was so fluid and we were so honed as a unit. And this was every Ranger platoon, every CAG troop, every, you know, mm-hmm. I, I can't speak to the seals, but I'm sure they were the same way. But yep. I, I mean, at that time, I, th- I would say by 2008, I mean, it really started 2004, 2005, mm-hmm. guys really started ramping up by 2008, 2009. I, I, there was no one in the world that I think could have yes. defeated a Ranger platoon. Oh, mm-hmm. I, 100%. it was just, it was insane. Just how fluid everything was go out yeah. do a hit, you know, mm-hmm. jack, you know, touchdown jackpot, bump, yep. roll back and just wash, rinse, repeat, you know, sometimes right. four, mm-hmm. times a, four times a night sometimes, you know? Yeah. Just, Sometimes yeah, you didn't even so come it, back. Sometimes you went from that target and it wasn't even, oh, yeah. it was like a new target that you had to go from the, yeah. the other one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're dro- you know, like I said, 58s are dropping your products on the top of a roof, you know, <laughs> right. I mean, it's just, it was just, it was awesome, man. That's what I said. Yeah. It was, uh, it, it was amazing to see. And, but also I can only imagine how fleeting, you know, that experience is and that, mm-hmm. uh, that continuity. Cause I don't know, man, it took us a long time to get there, but. And I don't, yeah. who, know, who knows where they're at now? So. Yeah, right. I, I know. We, we've we lost a lot. Like I said, you know, we took it for granted. So, in fact, I misspoke when I said 2007 is 2008, but that was the height of the surge. Right. Remember? So, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah Petraeus, right. Petraeus, I think, uh, what was in charge. And I remember we were doing a lot of work like Solder City. Um, and But we just took it for granted. And remember, the 17th, we were deployed. We Our guys were opcon i mean spread out platoon level between iraq and afghanistan then we had the fsf side so yeah, yeah. It, it, it was yeah. so interesting where a normal tech you know a conventional tech p you're still part of a like a you know a larger squadron and you know well, you have a deployed asog and, ASO. right. and our sf guys you know we, we were obviously talking about ranger centric but you know by that point especially in iraq mm-hmm. those guys were running with sif teams at that right point. oh yeah mm-hmm. you know so i mean so they're out there it, it, in a fight just like just like the rangers are doing these you know high hvt targets and and just you know getting in gunfights all the time you know scott mcphee ed shulman all the dudes you know yeah laying on mini guns and just <laughs> yeah <laughs> laying right. and stuff. so it's you right know, yeah those guys were just as busy and they'd elevated themselves to where like i said you know they sometimes they did sift deployments but not but then it was like every time a sift went out they had mm-hmm. you know i, I think they're crfs now or whatever they call them but uh yeah yeah, yeah but now, yeah it, it was it was incredible to see the entire unit both sides just i mean just keep getting better and better and better yeah mm-hmm. throughout that time mm-hmm. and from my understand they're even even better now like they're they're head and shoulders oh, yeah. above where even we were it's just yeah. it's, it's great to see i, I love it and and like kind of I was talking to Chachi recently and he was saying the same thing. Like if you set the stage and you, you prepare these guys, that's the way it should be. You know, the, the guys coming from behind you should be equal. I think you said it too, Matt, on that first podcast, they should be as equal or better than us. And that's the goal mm-hmm. is to make them better than us and make the 100%. unit better. Yeah. If they're not, you're failing. So Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I think a big part of that evolution. So remember, so 2008, uh, I know we chopped over to AFSOC and remember we did that cool ceremony down in Hurlburt. But I think that year we started doing assessment selection, uh, not only for TACP and ALOs and Matt and I remember we spent a lot of time in Hurlburt running those. <laughs> yeah, we did. And, we did. and I thought that was pretty squared away. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, CK, you were obviously the commander at that point, you know, when we went over to AFSOC. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know when we, I remember sitting down with, with LA down here at 720th, I, you were probably there too. And we kind of started. I, and you know, JD, yeah. I think I've told you this. I actually have my green book where I yeah. out where the whole the whole structure. I still got it here. Mm -hmm. that has the entire structure of what I thought the 17 should look like, mm -hmm. and um, and even breaking guys off to the STSs. And we had 15 positions. I mean, initially they gave us the world. Mm -hmm. They were converting yeah. yep. Charlie two combat control positions over or whatever mm -hmm. one, one Zulus now. And um, yeah, I mean, and, and then then we ran into the problem that we get we basically got everything we asked for. And I remember LA going like, all right, man, you know, but here you go. Yeah. Kill them. yeah. <laughs> and yeah. we run the first assessment and like four dudes show up. And I was like, oh God, <laughs> <laughs> what just happened? I know. <laughs> <laughs> we were still fighting ACC, not letting guys come to the selections because obviously you can't rob Peter to pay Paul. That's right. But, right. but at the same time, man, you, you were really, how many guys did you lose because you didn't allow them that opportunity that got out, you know, mm -hmm. like, right. screw it, you know. Like, why not just let them do it? You know, like, like, I never understood that holding the guy back. Uh -huh. And then, Matt, you also created, we were able to get, a, we had a lot of support positions uh, that, if I recall, did not materialize until after I left. Because we were there, we were pretty thin. I think we had one or two guys in the front office. <laughs> so you and I, one we did a lot guy, of those. Two supply we guys. did a lot. Yeah, we had one, yeah, yeah, yeah. one supply. We had Donnie, had AK, and Morgan. And I think that was it for support. <laughs> <Morgan>. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I will say. <laughs> yeah, they did everything. I was yeah. like yeah and that's yeah, that's a i mean it's a testament to them too because like you you if you equate us to like some other sts like that those guys those three dudes were doing the jobs of a whole squadron of guys you know it was oh, yeah 25 like, guys yeah yeah it was amazing yeah. and and i remember like matt and i so we've, we've kind of kept in touch over the years too in fact and i, I was down at the 17th in 2019 there was a ceremony for gab they renamed a uh, a PT uh, fitness center for him, but I could not believe how many support personnel yeah. there were. And I'm a big <laughs> believer in sometimes more is not necessarily better. <laughs> so you gotta have the right guys. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, you gotta yeah. have the right guys. And, yeah. and sometimes like the, to me, the 17th and the tech who we were hungry, you know, we would, everybody was, you know, dual qualified would handle many additional duties and responsibilities to make it happen. So yeah, I mean, JD um, kind of kept their edge. <laughs> Yeah, JD was op soup, chief of Stanival, like, mm -hmm, like right. elite trader. <laughs> yeah. Armor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That I I mean, that op soup job did, yeah. was not that was no joke, man. I mean, because like you guys alluded to, at any given time, a third of the squadron was deployed, you know, and at all mm -hmm. times, you know. So in, even with the SF guys, I mean it was even more than that. And it was just constant like meetings with seven seven twentieth and like just constant battle tracking and yeah, it was a that was a stressful job. Yeah. It was, but but, Matt, uh, but listening to uh, you and Brandy, your podcast, and you brought up a, a good point. So, I'd like to say, I was always a big believer, and I know we were on the we we were like I think in Melvin Sink, you know, the, the entire time. But because the folks were so busy and with the constant uh, you know combat rotations, you know, we were both very big on not micromanaging. Yeah, folks, you guys are great let, at let, that. Let, yeah. let, let in the NCOs run it. And if you can take time off, take time off. You know, I was, I always hit a clock watcher. So I was very big on uh, do what you need to do. Um, if there's something to do, be home, you know, enjoy that time off because, yeah. you know, you can't pay people more, but if you can give them time off. Sure. So we are very big on that. So yeah. you two were that the biggest, uh, you ran the biggest defensive screen for all those guys. I mean, they, they and they said it, they, they, it was, you know, they, they really liked the fact that you, didn't let all that kind of queep trickle down to them. You know, you let them, like you said, you let them get off, you let them train, you let them do what they needed to do. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Remember Blues Monday, we kind of, we kind of pushed off that. <laughs> I don't think the we Blues Monday, we never did it. <laughs> Whose brainchild was that did. in the first place? I mean, come on, what a, <laughs> gee, many Christmas. Yeah, yeah, no, like, it was great. It was, well, you know, as, as, a, as a squatter super at that point, it was great having, you know, CK as the leadership because you listened. You know, mm -hmm. that, right. that was what was so awesome, man, as you, you know, you've said you sought advice. And if, if I gave it to you, you may not have always agreed with it, but at least mm -hmm. you listened. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I mean, in most cases, you implemented, which made you such a, you know, a great commander for us at that time, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, your your uh, successor is a little, a little, a little, little different. But uh, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, you know, it was, uh, 
it, it was nice. And I've always been a huge fan of that. Like, why? Mm-hmm. What, why? Why would you? You don't need to overburden guys. Like, yeah. You know? mm-hmm. if, if now if they start doing dumb shit, obviously mm-hmm. you're, sure. you correct them. You know, if they're OFO all the time. But yep. our guys, our guys were pretty damn well disciplined. And, they, uh, yeah, they they all were. It was... you, didn't, you didn't have to worry about that. Yeah. So CK, yeah. you're. Uh, I mean, like I know you, you, you. We've obviously gotten to where you're the commander now, but like, like what was that? Who who did you know you were going to be the commander? Or was that no? Just... So actually, uh, got an in- interesting story. So uh, so it was the deal of the first year. So in the Air Force, it, to command, you actually have to apply for a formal board and to screen. So you're eligible for command anywhere. So as you can imagine, those are pretty competitive. Yeah. Um, and so my package, so honestly, my Air Force career, I mean, my time in the Navy definitely didn't help because my duty history was blank. And so I actually, so I didn't uh, make the Air Force Command screening board. Mm. Um, and at the time, so I figured, well, I'll, you know, I'll retire in a year. But, and that's when General Longoria kind of went to bat for me. Um, to fight for me. But in hindsight, do you guys remember uh, Jeff Clifton? He was the regimental fires guy back in mm-hmm. 2007 and eight. So, you know, it's a small world, right? So a couple years ago, he reached out, I live down on the Oregon coast. And um, so he said he had this gig where we supported kind of a sub under Booz Allen. We went out to Europe and we, we pretended to be a staff, right? They needed someone with a, you know, ALO kind of fires background. And, and Jeff Clifton and I, we were neighbors and, you know, friends. And so he told me actually, uh, I, I didn't realize that at the time, but the reg- regimental staff, they actually helped lobby to keep me because they, they had known me from, you know, the late nineties. And sure. so, and, and I had no idea. So it was kind of cool to, you know, to hear about that, but it just goes to show about, you know, you build those relationships. And, Definitely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, quite an honor. 